Howdy from Arlington, Texas, y'all. Hope this video finds you well. Uh, it is Wednesday, or it should be when I post this. I'm going to do a tabletop showcase video response for G's Mikey. I will link to his channel below. Check it out. I guarantee this is going to be unlike any other in the contest and maybe any other video on YouTube just because of the content in it. IndyCar Racing, Indianapolis 500 Racing, YouTube just seems to be all baseball, and man, I am so damn tired of seeing baseball everywhere, and I am so fucking tired of hearing Juan Soto's name. So here's something different that probably two-thirds of you, well, you probably already clicked off by now because you're not listening to me because I cursed the name of baseball and I'm so fucking tired of hearing a Juan Soto. Anyway, we're going to start off with the T36 set. So here we go. All right. The T37 set is from 1911. It is the auto drivers set from American Tobacco. You see a lot of holes in there and I'll explain why. So this is a 25 card set, but each card has four variations. The fronts are all the same, but on the back you have Hassan, cigarettes you have mecca cigarettes and then each one has a factory 30 and a factory 649 i have completed the 25 card set but i am currently working on the master set of 100 i believe i am at 66 cards right now first card david bruce brown okay i get it you know most people aren't going to know who david bruce brown is but if you're a vintage um or pre-war i guess baseball collector he is the most scarce card in the T227 set, the series of champions. Uh, his card was likely pulled. And, um, yeah, I don't think there's more than maybe a dozen of them known about. Last year, I, I don't even remember what the number was it sold for, but I would venture to say that short of fake scarcity, like a Lewis Hamilton numbered card or a graded card, his card from that T227 set is the most valuable racing card ever. But anyway, so I got three out of the four there. We got Bob Berman here. I'm at three out of four. Lewis Chevrolet. I'm at two of the four. Ignore the spot. I lent this table to my stepson. It was per almost new, and he did not return it in the same fashion. But anyway, that's Lewis Chevrolet. If you recognize the last name, yes is your answer. Walter Christie. So we'll show here. So as you can see here, you got Mecca cigarettes and Hassan cigarettes, Mecca and Hassan. But then there is a factory right under the E, or no, I'm sorry, the factory is under the IG in cigarettes. So that's a factory 640, factory 30, factory 640, 649, I'm sorry, factory 30. So anyway, that's where you can see that there is, and there is a variation of each of those. Um, this is Demigay. Forget his first name. Victor Demigay. Ralph De Palma, who won the Indianapolis 500 once. Uh, Bert Dingley, I got two. Oh, where are we at? Sorry, I'm looking at my iPad over here with the checklist because an Arthur DeRay, I got three of the four because they do not have the names on the front, as you can tell, and I do not have all of the cards memorized. But anyway, so I'm not going to sit here and I don't want to make this a 30-minute video. So here's some more. So this is 16 pages. So for the first 16 cards of the 25 set, uh, that's what I have. I'm going to pull out the next one and we will add it in. All right, first one there is Ralph Mulford, um, who was considered one of the best early auto drivers. As we can see here, we got some, got plenty of holes to fill. These things just don't come up very often, and the price has really risen on them in the last three or so years. So that's the last card of the set. The rest of these are just some multiples I have. You know, hopefully I'll, I'll trade these off someday or something to get the ones that I need. Um, but yeah, the prices have just exploded on these. And then something similar that I thought I'd show. I mentioned the David Bruce Brown T227. Well, Ralph Mulford, who was the first photo in the set, or in this little clip, 
was also in that set and this is a copy that I, I think I got this thing for less than 40 bucks I need to actually work on my search and see if I can upgrade this um, now that I'm in a little bit of a better place card money wise um, but yeah that's from the T227 set early so we have touched I think that's pretty much all of the pre-war racing cards that I have I may have a couple other ones but we shall see all right, so some cards from some other sets. You can see these PSA graded ones. These are 1954 Stark and Wetzel. This was a list, an unnumber. They are blank backed of the Indianapolis 500 winners. And I don't think any of these really show them too badly, but I could be wrong. These were Stark and Wetzel. Stark and Wetzel was a lunch meat company. So they did, you know, hot dogs, you know, that kind of stuff, bologna. And these were, I believe, these were done with the hot dogs as well, but I don't see any of the stains, so I don't know if these were on the outside or what these were. These are pretty scarce. Um, they're becoming a little bit more expensive, so I definitely need to pick up more of those soon, but they just don't come available very often. Speaking of which, same thing with the Mar, Mar Hoffer Meats. Oh, Stark and Wetzel used to have a thing with the Indianapolis 500, like they would sponsor the Rookie of the Year, and then I think the Rookie of the Year uh, got, like, free meat for a year from their deli. So that was kind of a cool thing. Marhofer was also associated with the Indianapolis 500. These ones, you can definitely, they're not blank back. And you can definitely tell the wiener stains. You know, we'll just leave wiener stains where it is. But those are the only two I have of those. Actually, an auction of these ended two nights ago that had an A.J. Foyt and two others. I thought I had the money to go after it, um, but that thing went for almost double what I thought, so it didn't end up happening. These I've shown before. These are two sets of 55 and 1956 Champion Spark Plugs. Now, they do have some like NASCAR drivers in there as well, but I'm always on the lookout for these because, as you see, they're Maurice's Garage, um, but then there are some other service stations that were used, so I'm always on the lookout for those and actually had a lot of these that I won on eBay and they came in yesterday and they are not in the video, but you'll see those in the near future if you're actually still watching my videos. 1971 Fleer drag strips. These were actually just cards that were backers in the pack for stickers. Uh, but something a little different. I think I'm missing like three of them to complete the set. This of course is my favorite because it's Ken Miles and Lloyd Ruby, who you saw Lloyd Ruby back over here from Wichita Falls, Texas. And he is definitely my favorite driver that I never got to see drive. Um, he was called Hard Luck Lloyd, and until Mike Landretti was considered the best driver in the Indianapolis 500 that never won the race. Just had a lot of bad luck. Had, had, had a handful of opportunities, and cars gave out, or other things happened, and it just didn't work out. So those are some other assorted vintage-ish sets. Um, again, these are matchbooks. Um, so not considered trading cards, but with the lack of trading cards... Things like these and these, which are off of, you know, hot dog packages. These, which were also, I believe, on hot dog packages. Just, there's not a lot out there, so you have to expand if you just want to stick with standard size cards and collect this kind of stuff that is from the earlier days of IndyCar and the Indy 500. You just don't have a lot of options. So here we got a few cards that are more just racing general or you know in that case that west virginia card it's a license plate card just i grew up in west virginia um these here these are definitely indie related and so is this upside down boy that's in there um just some other general stuff as i mentioned you know it's hard to find a lot of cards there's a lot of missing years so here i have like this little assortment of postcards that I've picked up because in a lot of ways postcards are kind of like the, the available trading cards these are some jumbo ones that's three different copies of the Lloyd Ruby I've just picked them up over time here's a couple copies of Johnny Boyd from 1965 and then just some other random ones because again there's not a lot of trading cards so if you actually want to document some of the history of the sport that you love, sometimes you have to think outside the box. There's really just no other option. All right, so these first three columns here, these are these were printed by Parkhurst, I believe released in Canada. Um, hence the part because of the Parkhurst. 
Uh, but this is a set of Indianapolis Speedway winners from 1960. So I didn't like lay them out the best. I don't, I know I have a set. I probably have two sets and I'm probably a good ways toward the third set. Um, mostly the winners. And then you have a couple of like more, con you know, from the time around the late fifties. Um, but that's just something that I've acquired over time. These are available. Um, hell, there's a set on eBay right now, but the guy wants over a grand, which is definitely way above market value. So these are a little bit bigger. And as you can tell, they look the same. These were apparently in a Milton Bradley game of some sort. These are actually dual sided and have different drivers on each side is where the actual set cards, which are a standard you know, just have a normal back, uh, but they're standard sized, I was saying. So another random oddball set. This is from the 79, <clears throat> 1979 Avalon Hill game. If you've watched my videos and you've seen that little auto racing mat looking thing that I have, it's actually a board game. And these were the cards that came with it. But again, a lot of these guys don't have stuff out there. Uh, this top sheet I used, Mario Andretti, AJ Foyt, are obviously why. Johnny Rutherford, who's from over in Fort Worth and signs through the mail. If you're interested in Jim McElreath, who lived here in Arlington for most of, if not all of his life. This is the only actual Jimmy McElreath, air quotes, card that I know of. Um, I did have a postcard. There was a couple of copies of one of his postcards in that earlier, one of the earlier clips. Over here, Paul Goldsmith. I have a lot of photos. I got these from my buddy Mike. At Speedway Signatures. Um, Paul Goldsmith is the oldest living Indianapolis 500 veteran. He is, I want to say, 94 right now, maybe 95. Um, not sure if he's still flying planes. He was up into his early 90s, 91, 92. But, yeah, a dude is in his 90s and sharp as a tack. Oh, hey, meeting. Um, and then speaking of, oh, and he is one of, I think it's three, maybe it's four, People that have driven in the Indianapolis 500 that were born in my home state of West Virginia, although he did not grow up there. And this I also got from Mike a few years ago. Duke Dinsmore, just a little note on his own personal stationery, but he is another one that is from the state of West Virginia, that uh, was born in West Virginia and drove in the Indianapolis 500. All right, we're going to wrap it up with this video clip. This was another board game set that I found. I didn't lay them all out, but they have Indy 500 winners from past seat, past races. This Bosch spark plug set, I believe, is an either an eight or nine card set. I have a complete set. I've got all the cards. These were just the ones I found. These are not cheap to find either. The last time there was a licensed Indy car set, like issued in a pack form, was 2007. Here you have a Scott Dixon, Marco Andretti, A.J. Foyt IV, Simmons, Matsura, and Scott Sharp autographs. There are others. Um, I never put that set together. I may have to go ahead and get that done. Unfortunately, Danica Patrick's in there and is, oh, I can't stand her. And it hurts me. It hurts me to have to put that kind of money into one. Uh, Louis Meyer, Indianapolis, three-time champion, matchbook. Parnelli Jones, uh, some of you know about these winner circle because of baseball. Um, Parnelli Jones was on one of them. Can't remember who he was with, but so that's I have two copies of it. But I was trying to show the the back there. Some slides. I know those top ones are AJ Foyt. I can't remember who those bottom ones are. I'm a much a little bit more of an AJ Foyt fan than a Mario Andretti fan, but you would have a hard time telling based on some of the stuff I have right there in the middle. The uncertified Allen against her autograph that was given to me by Brent over at uh, oh man, I'm having a brain fart now. Your friend and mine, Brent. I'm having a brain fart. Uh, so some pass, press pass showcase Mario Andretti, including a one out of 15, a dual relic of Mario Andretti and Davy Allison. I have more stuff. This is just what I was able to find in the like 15 minutes I was looking. Um, one of my favorites ever is Dario Franchitti. So these nine cards were at a set. Also with these autograph cards, they were in there, uh, but commemorating his win in the 2007 Indianapolis 500. Same thing here, but these were actually case toppers. And I think there's only 5,000 of them. So I have whatever percentage I have with my six, a couple other Dario Franchitti cards. 
relics that I got. Dan Weldon, also one of my favorites. If you saw the video yesterday, I talked about him and how he is like probably the nicest athlete that I've ever met. Uh, Goodwin Champions a few years ago put some Dan Gurney relics in there, so I have a couple of those. Some more Paul Goldsmith. Uh, the Winter Circle card there on the left was from Valve NASCAR Radio. Um, those are not easy to find, and they're very condition sensitive. A couple of autographs. We got some Sam Hornish autographs. Uh, a couple time Indy 500 winner, series champ. And then Scott Dixon over there on the right. Just some randos, a Bobby Unser and an Al Unser Jr. numbered from the Press Pass Legend sets. And then just some random autographs. Those two are Donnie Allison behind the Donnie Allison's more Paul Goldsmith. Those were all through the mail things. So that's what I got. I had a blast doing this. I know that I did a, or I believe I did a video response for Jeez Mikey last time he asked for a tabletop display and it was my Andrew Shaw stuff. Um, but this was fun because I am getting back to my racing and kind of getting away from much of anything else. Part of what he wanted was for you to enjoy your collection. And yeah, I really have. Not going to lie, I kind of forgot how much cool stuff I had that was Indy 500 related. So it's definitely going to reignite a little something in me. Um, very excited about it. And I have more stuff that I've picked up recently coming that I will show on the channel in the near future. But that's it. I'm going to wrap it up. That's what I got for today. I appreciate you watching if you made it this far. As always, don't be a dickhole. Be kind to animals. Have your pet spayed or neutered. Let's get... We, we, we shouldn't have animals in shelters. So let's be responsible. Adopt. Don't shop. Adopt from shelters. And I will see you down the road.